morning and welcome to our service here in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. And we are glad that you are joining with us. Uh, we are an open and affirming congregation. We truly believe that no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey. understand we might be having some technical difficulties this morning with our internet. Not sure what is going on with that, but um, hopefully they'll straighten themselves out be able to uh, continue with a few announcements to share with you. Um, we, are be, we are doing some renovations on our building. We are covering all of them up with, with vinyl and aluminum sidings. Uh, because of that, uh, they're going to be bringing in a lift in order to reach the higher uh, elevations of our church building this coming week, starting this coming week. The circular driveway out in front of the office uh, will be closed, people mover uh, into the driveway. So please park in the back of the building, church building, and um, the, uh, uh, the door to um, the, uh, uh, the hall will be open for people to come in and use that entrance. Also, outside in front of the church, uh, but we need to have your help in keeping this blessing box filled. So far, since it's been up, it's been used quite significantly. Uh, I think we fill, refilled it at least three different times. I'd like to have your donations of, put them in the box, but just bring them into the church office uh, so that we can store them and then restock the blessing box uh, as there is a need. Those are all the announcements. Of this time we'll begin our worship, um, and again, I remind you that I will read the part that says one, and we'll all read the part that says all together. People of God, the Lord is merciful. God God forgives our our sin and and pardons pardons all all our our debts. debts. People of God, the Lord is good. God God restores restores us to the the way of salvation. God, the Lord is love. God God revives our spirit spirit so that that we may rejoice. rejoice. People of God, the Lord, God God speaks speaks so that that we may follow. Righteous. God's glory fills this place. Let us worship the Lord our God. our hearts and our minds together in our prayer of invocation. Let us pray together. Some are full of joy and others come with holes in our hearts. Some of us come weighed down with worry and others come with peace and calm. Some Some of us us come come assailed assailed by by doubts and and others. However however we come, come, O God, God, here here we we are. are with With gratitude gratitude for for the freedom freedom to to worship worship as as we choose. Amen. My friends, there there is no doubt that wants us to be in the way that we live our lives. We ask that you come together with us as we struggle with our sinfulness, as we struggle with the ways that we fall away from coming together and confess our sinfulness to God. Giver of peace, you spread out your radiance in every landscape. You unfold your love in all. 
yet we miss the signs of your presence and see only the bends and wrinkles of living. How we look at a peace and how we long for justice and peace in the world. Forgive us for letting fear build walls of separation. Forgive us for hesitating to speak when our words could right a wrong. Forgive our half hearted excuses. Set a reminder in our midst to call us to be peacemakers. Send your spirit to wrap us in the of our fears. Pour out compassion and persistence. Let us live in the way Christ taught that all may enjoy the life of Shalom, your peace for all. Amen. My friends, our God is full of mercy and grace, slow to anger and rich in love. When we fall, he is there to help us up again. As events and circumstances, he comes alongside to support and encourage us. God is always, always close at hand, ready to listen when we call out to him. Prayers and God answers them. So be at peace. God has heard our prayer. Amen. seconds and see how that goes. The longer I stand here, the heavier this brick gets. So I don't think I can hold it for much longer. Mr. Bruce, can you please come help me? Before I drop it. Do I have to hold it out like that too? No, you can just hold it just like that. Oh, Whew. okay. Now I can give my arm a rest and maybe I can. But Pastor Bruce helped me with my burden, my brick burden. I guess we can now put it down. We don't. Oh, we can put it down. Yeah, we can put it down. Oh, okay. We're done with the break. Thank you. Thank you for the help. You're welcome. So we all have burdens that we carry with us. Burden is something that is like a worry or frustration. We have trouble with it. We might get mad and upset about it. But just like with my brick, that was my burden. I asked Pastor Bruce to help me. And when he did, it made all the difference in the world. I could then rest my arm. So what kind of burdens do we have? In September, sometimes you have problems with schoolwork. Maybe you're having problems with a friend. They've been mean to you. Maybe you're having problems at home, or maybe there's financial trouble, or somebody really sick. And those are burdens that we carry with us, trouble with them. But sometimes we can ask for help. Like I asked Pastor Bruce, maybe ask a friend, ask a mom or dad. Let them help carry that burden with you. Now, sometimes we pray for help. I believe when I pray to Jesus for help, if a friend comes along without me asking them, that's Jesus letting me know he is with me and he is sending help with my burden. Now, food that a lot of families deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's called food insecurity. Now, if you don't know what that is, that is simply families don't have enough money in order to purchase food so they can live a healthy life. And I work at Emmitsburg, and I pack backpacks when we're in school for the kids over the weekend because a lot of those kids don't have enough food for the they're food insecure. So a box out front. And a blessing box is for food to help those in need. So we're asking that you bring in non-perishable food items. And I'll give you some examples. These crunchy granola bars, maybe a whole pack of crackers. Um, 
mac and cheese, rice side dishes, anything canned, anything that's packaged that's not going to spoil. And so what I do is I will fill up the blessing box. And I think Pastor Bruce already said we've probably filled it up two or three times already. So look through your I'm sure there's something in there you can part with or pick up a few extra items and do drop them off at the church office. And I will take care of putting them in the blessing box. You do not need to do that. So let's help lighten the burden of food insecurity within our own little neighborhood by providing food that, that, that will help them get through. So let's say a little, sometimes our burdens are very heavy. We need help. Help us to remember that Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And to ask for that help. Let us know that we can those in need. In his name we pray. Amen. So go looking through your cupboards, bring it in, drop the food off to the church office. Oh, it's not expired. And help the people that are food insecure in our neighborhood. Talk. Thank you so much, Karen. Our scripture lessons this morning begin with our first lesson from Paul's letter to the Romans. I'm going to be reading from the seventh chapter of the 15th verse of that chapter. Hear now the word of God. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good, as it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good, but the evil I do not want to keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it. But it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do it with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law. But I see another me. Waging war against the law of my mind. And making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. The lesson for this morning is recorded in Matthew's Gospel, reading select the 11th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. So one generation. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge for John came neither eating nor drinking. And they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is right by her deeds. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. Admit it to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is of God's word for this day. May God add a special blessing and the doing of God's word. Amen. We come to this 4th of July weekend, and as we lift up and celebrate the birth of our nation, this sort of came to light uh, this week as I was preparing my sermon. Right there in the 16th verse of 
Matthew's 11th chapter, Jesus and this generation. Maybe that question needs to be answered by each generation for itself. A lot of times we ask ourselves questions kids. It's always sort of been a national pastime to, to rag on the younger generation and complain about their lack of this or their lack of that or do or don't do. Former NBC News anchor Tom Brokaw, however, comes flat out and tells us who gets the as the greatest generation. I was reading book, Brokaw's book by the, the same title. He argues that it's the GI generation that stormed the beaches of Normandy in, that went that bought bonds to support the war effort. This is the greatest generation, according to Tom Brokaw. And it's pretty hard to diss that statement. Really hard. These are the ones, the men and women, the living and the dead, who willingly gave their lives, who gave their limbs, who gave their sweet nightly dreams of childhood over to the enduring nightmare of World War II. The war that honestly and truly saved the world from fascism, the war that protected the home of the brave, the land of the free, so we might grow up safely. But you know what? Just maybe, and I know I might get in a little bit of trouble here, but hear me out. Just maybe they're not this generation. And I know my father and my father-in-law would give me a real argument, as you might as well. Or it's difficult to argue the point that this GI generation is the greatest generation. For they performed innumerable acts of quiet heroism that changed history and in the process became a stalwart population of people with the tenacity forged in the battles of the city in northern Ireland. When the war ended and they returned to their homes to marry and raise children, they had, by virtue of participation in a global war, matured beyond their years. Skills. They came home with a strong sense of personal responsibility and patriotism. They came home to do their duty, to work with honor and live with faith. They came home to a new start and to rebuild a nation damaged by the Depression. They did community by community as active Samaritans. When we look at our parents or our grandparents or the GI generation, it's hard for our own generational self-esteem and why not? How can you top saving the world from Hitler? We honor them. We honor this GI generation. Saving the world from Hitler. That's why fascism and the KKK or other hate groups active today because we already supposedly fought that war. But maybe, just maybe this GI generation generation. Sure, they overcame tremendous obstacles, became part of the greatest investment in higher education that any society ever made, a generous the GI Bill, providing veterans tuition and spending money for education. It was a brilliant and enduring commitment to the nation's, nation's future. That quote comes from Tom Brokaw in his book. The GI Bill provided opportunity for democracy. I read this week about a man by the name of Dan Hodermarski. There's a name for you. It's almost as bad as Druckenmiller. Hodermarski. He was a child of the poverty, 12th child of a blue collar Pennsylvania family, a veteran of the Battle of the Bulge. Dan came home from the war suffering from what we now recognize as post traumatic stress syndrome, but who then rose to prominence in his field. Like thousands, his nickname, which is understandable, trying to pronounce his last name, but Hodo went to school on the GI Bill. He became a teacher and an acclaimed artist, the beloved mentor of hundreds of students. In the late 19th century, a veteran of the GI Bill founded what is reputed to be 
one of the most highly regarded art departments of any prep school in America at Deerfield Academy in Massachusetts. His story is repeated in so many across this nation. But maybe, just maybe, his generation was not the greatest generation. The GI generation changed. Look at the women of these generations. Women's Live got started when Rosie the Riveter, Rosie the Riveter went to work 30 years before they thought of calling it Women's Live. During the Gulf War were a direct and traceable result of women serving in the waves and the wax and the frontline nurses. They were ordinary women like Colonel Mary Harriman of the U.S. Army Women's Auxiliary Home of the United States Air Force. They got their start in World War II. Tom Brokaw quotes Margaret Ray Ringingberg saying, My father said, I didn't get to serve, and I don't have any boys. So, I so off she went to fly all sorts of aircraft in the Women's Air Force service pilots. Ringerberg was typical of ordinary patriotic women of her day. The country was in trouble. There was a job to do. And when these boys and girls came home from the war, they weren't necessarily eager to stay put, having seen the world. Armed with higher education, armed with a worldly centered by their parents, they sensed a new freedom. And with those views, they relocated to distant cities. They blended the national population. They developed a new and strong middle class, mobile, success oriented families, creating a new America. The social strata, previously permanent, segregated, and separate, mixed in a manner that was unimagined before then, creating prosperity, creating new ideas, trouble. But maybe, just maybe, the GI generation wasn't the greatest generation. So which generation stands out in distinction? It's a difficult question. Actually, it's not that it's so difficult. It's that it's a bad question, the wrong question. Because the people born between a given set of years, but the people reborn in any age or at any age, the question is not of generational greatness, but regenerate. To what shall I compare this generation, asks Jesus. In utter frustration, he bemoans the stubbornness of their hearts. He says, it's like children sitting in the marketplace, the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. We all know that Jesus wept. But do we realize that he also ranted and raved? In the name of the kingdom, they find some reason to dismiss me, to ignore me, Jesus said. Whoa, he There's a word, spell checkers have been recognized. Did you realize that? Whoa. Woe to that generation that tries to trivialize me, make me irrelevant. How many times by our not love unconditionally we made Jesus irrelevant in our lives by not following his. Nevertheless, there was a remnant in that generation, a remnant that danced when he piped and mourned when he dirged. The dance goes on today. It's not Generation X, it's not the boomers, it's not the builders, it's not the millennial kids. It's all, it's every person from every generation who submits to regeneration of the heart, who submits to a change of heart. People who through faith cause of lions, quench the fury of flames, and escape the edge of the sword. Weakness was turned to strength, who became powerful in battle and routed foreign enemies. And to people who went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. People of whom the world was not worthy. 
That's the generation here today. The intergenerational church of God, marked not by the year of their birth, call of the master in their lives. Together, grieve and die. To call one generation the greatest immediately diminishes all generations who preceded it and all generations who follow it. Christian truth that before the awesome divine presence of God, we are but one equal people, a single generation, a human generation, one race, one. That's how we need to live our lives. Amen. up in our prayers, we lift up the burden to share with each other as uh, Miss Adams talked about, and we just ask that you will to bear each other's burdens as we move through this, this difficult times in the life of our country. Um, the prayer list came out on Tuesday, and um, it's a good thing I have had no individuals to add to the prayer list. Uh, we still keep praying for uh, Diane Esser and Bob Nace as they recover surgeries, and, um, but there have been no other specific prayer concerns this morning. So um, look for the prayer list that will come out again on Tuesday, but keep supporting each other and keep bearing each other's burdens as we struggle with what it means to that celebrating its birth in a time when we are experiencing great divisions and a lot of unrest. 
So let's join our hearts and minds together in prayer. We are grateful that you have revealed yourself to us, each of us loved by you as children, each of us precious in your sight, each of us a reflection of you, each of us bound, which is, in fact, your presence among us. We come to you, O oh God, weary and carrying us bear the yoke of loss and grief. Some of us bear the yoke of caring, caring for those who cannot care for themselves. Some of us bear the yoke of unemployment or underemployment. Some of us bear the yoke of, of oppression or marginalization. Some of us bear the yoke of violence or anger. Some of us bear the yoke of depression. Some of us bear the yoke of addiction. And from so many other yokes, dear God, we pray for rest. We pray for healing. We pray for release. We pray for wholeness. On this 4th of July holiday weekend, many burdens. Many times we don't trust our leaders. We can't find ways to work together for the common good. We allow the least among us to lose our children to endless conflicts and wars. We fixate on what, we, what divides us rather than on what brings us together as one people. Remind us this weekend of our calling. Remind us of our common creed. Inspire us to ensure that all of your children enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Help us to be profoundly grateful for authority, to never take these gifts for granted, and to use them for the benefit of God of all life. May peace and justice fill our land, and indeed the whole world. We pray this morning for the escalating tensions and violences that seem to be popping up all over our country, where people are victimized, where safety is threatened, where freedoms are denied, where life is treated as anything less than sacred. Gracious God, grant together, tethered by your love, guided by your presence, bringing your kingdom into this world. All this we pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father, in your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we talk about our offerings, the gifts that we bring to the church and to the ministry of Jesus Christ in the world that we are a part of, I encourage you to keep finding ways to send us your tithes, your offerings, and all these uh, to, to help other people and to share your, your talents and your time with other people and that yourself. I do want to let you know, uh, as a congregation, for and received a PPP loan from the government. We found that um, our, our giving was not really meeting our expenses, so we found a need uh, during the PPP loans to apply for a loan. We didn't do it the first time around because we felt, as a congregation, that there were a lot more people, a lot more businesses. Than, than our congregation because we felt we were pretty affluent. We decided to go for a loan and we did receive a loan to help us with our, our salaries that are still ongoing and the expenses that are still ongoing um, in regards to our congregation. So please, please remember your church. Please remember uh, to send our gifts that you would like to share in the ministry of this church. And we pray that we will all find ways of sharing who we are and with the world. Let's join together in our We bring our gifts with gratitude for the opportunity to give. We thank you, O Lord, for the bounty that is ours and for the freedom we have to worship as we choose. We are grateful to ponder and partake. We bring our gifts with hearts full of thanksgiving for all that is ours. It's only that you would help us to remember. Amen. Thank uh -huh.
witness to Christ's love. Let, Let our, our words, words bring, bring reconciliation. reconciliation. Let your thoughts be of peace. Let, Let our, our touches, touches bring healing. healing. Let your actions can be, be a sign of hope and a beacon, beacon of joy. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, ship of the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Thanks be to God and all.